Good afternoon. This is Tony Chernowski, manager of the Practical Investor LLC. Today is March 26, 2009, and I have yet another topic for the day. It's called Declining Wedges. What do they imply? Before we begin, I just need to go through the disclaimer. This video is meant for instruction and entertainment purposes only. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell any security. A purchase or sale of a security may result in a loss of principal. Please consult with an expert advisor who may explain the risks of any investment you may consider. You cannot invest directly in an index. Good evening. About a month ago, I came out with a declining wedge in the Treasury bonds. I just wanted to do an update on that and give you an idea of uh, the interplay that's going on in the markets today. It's very interesting to see how things have been developing so far. And uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, give some further insights into the market and then uh, proceed with uh, uh, yet another analysis that might have, uh, coincidentally, uh, a very important uh, impact on the entire market. So let's just go ahead and, and begin. First of all, I'm starting with the 30-year uh, U.S. Treasury bond. And if you recall, about a month ago, I reported on a declining or falling wedge and said that that is usually bullish. Now, look what happened. We went through an entire two-month period here uh, where the market went sideways. Why was that? Well, with all of the new bond issues coming out, uh, and um, uh, finally, for example, last week, the Chinese came out and said, we're, not, we're just not going to buy any more of your bonds. You guys are spending too recklessly. Uh, what we've had here is a combination of, of fear and greed. Let's talk about that for a minute. The fear is that bonds are going to tank because the Chinese will stop buying them. But lo and behold, Mr. Bernanke comes to the rescue, and last Wednesday you can see that spike where the Treasury bonds went up to 133, all in about 20 minutes after he announced that uh, the Fed was going to start buying about $300 billion of U.S. Treasury bonds. Wow. Okay, greed overcame fear at this point. Now, the market has pulled back a bit since then. But the point is, right now, it has every indication of going higher. Now, let's just uh, be mindful of the fact that uh, we've gone two entire months until last Wednesday with virtually sideways motion, nothing was happening in bonds. So be real careful here because this one is, I think, is going to be a little bit tricky. But uh, as of last uh, week, uh, they announced that they were going to, the, the Fed announced that they were going to start accelerating the purchase of bonds, and that has helped to put a floor under them again. So what's happening is you have a combination of fear and greed. A fear, the fear so far is that bonds are going to tank because nobody wants to buy them anymore. The greed is we've got the Fed coming in and announcing that they're going to buy bonds. Now, by the way, $300 billion is a drop in the bucket. Nonetheless, how would you like to get a little bit of that TARP money, eh? <laughs> That's the whole point. I think uh, the investors, you might say, overreacted to that. But in the meantime, what it did was started the positive move in bonds. Now, there's something else that can come into play. Let's, let's just get into that in a minute. I wanted to bring in yet another analysis uh, of a falling wedge as well. Because bonds have often been treated as an inverse of the stock market. And you'll notice something here. The stock market went down uh, from early February to the early March. And the fact is, bonds stayed sideways. So what was happening is the sell-off in stocks was putting a floor under bonds. There wasn't enough fear there for bonds to tank, in other words, um, because there were enough people exiting the stock market and looking for something else uh, to put their money in. So now we have just enough incentive to possibly bring in the greed factor. But let's state something else. Bonds have often acted as an inverse of stocks. So let's take a look at something else here that also acts as an inverse of the stock market. It's the VIX. So let's take a look. We also, in almost the same precise period of time, 
had a declining wedge, a falling wedge in the VIX. And the VIX has actually held up a lot more. Now, you would think with this rally starting in March, you can see from point B, that's where the rally in the stocks began. We made a move down to point C in the VIX. But it wasn't a very deep move considering the great rally that we've had over the last three weeks. As a matter of fact, last week when we had that pullback in stocks, we suddenly had a, a rally up in the VIX. So in other words, there's a floor under the VIX as well, at least for the time being. And here's the point that I want to make. This VIX will react very, very strongly if the stock market starts its decline again. And uh, just to, to point out a couple of things, number one, if the VIX gets above 45, uh, right now it's resting at, uh, at 40.36. So if it gets above 45, we have a short-term warning that something is afoot in the stock market. Once above 50, though, and this is really critical now, what's about a bunch above 50, it will be in the upper trading band for the VIX. So what that means is that we should uh, see a maybe even a stronger move down in stocks than most people are anticipating. I'm not sure that that's going to happen. All I'm doing is speculating on the fact that the VIX did not tank as bonds did not tank. Both of these have the same behavior. It looks like they're waiting for something to happen, and I'm just wondering if that something might be a sell-off in stocks. Well, that's a summary of what I'm thinking about right now. I believe that we may be very, very close to a top in stocks. And if you look at uh, my other video that I released today, uh, you'll see uh, a summary of what I'm talking about there as well in the outside day. So I hope all of you uh, can get some good information out of this, and uh, I hope that this is informative. For those of you that want to be a little bit more up to date on what's going on in the market, uh, you may look at my website. Uh, my uh, registration for uh, advisor is on my website, as well as uh, some details about uh, uh, a daily newsletter that I write to subscribers. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can email me at tonyc at thepracticalinvestor.com. And uh, right now, uh, a quarterly subscription gets you uh, subscribed all the way through July 15th. So uh, for that, uh, it's not a bad deal. Uh, just get in touch, and I hope you all have a great day, and please do the right thing. Thank you very much.